Hello, so um, after talking with Skyl Studios on YouTube, I thought I'd make a video of my setup for streaming games, um, in particular using CMU, or CMU, however you want to pronounce it, for, uh, doing Wii and Wii U games. So, what you want to get, first and foremost, is, uh, well actually, the first thing to note is that this will only work if your desktop PC or laptop that you're streaming from is using a NVIDIA uh, uh, an NVIDIA GPU, and I think it's the 600 series and later, but don't quote me on that. The chances are, though, if you're using a Wii U emulator to play something from the Wii U, like Breath of the Wild or Wind Waker HD, then the chances are you're already rocking something that will work fantastically with this device. Um, so you want to go ahead and you want to get this app from the App Store called Moonlight Game Streaming. Um, and it's by Cameron Gutman. And um, you'll see that I've got it here. Um, just here, Moonlight. Um, and b b the next step, before you go ahead and do anything, is uh, you want to open up GeForce Experience and go to the Shield option. Make sure Game Stream is turned on. Um, and this will populate with lots of already supported games and then you can add .exe files so I've added the Insane Trilogy and CEMU and to add you just go add go to that e .exe file and open and that's that um, so next you open up Moonlight on your GPDXD and it'll search for a while and this is my desktop that's running uh, the uh, game stream and you can click there and you'll see that it adds a load of games that are already supported with this um, and they all work really well um, so for the purposes of this I'm just going to do CMU and I'm going to quit session just to show you it from the start quit session okay you do this and it will say establishing connection and starting CEMU, CMU, well, however you want to pronounce it. And you'll see your desktop on your GPDX Day Plus. Um, there is one step you want to do first, which is on the desktop go to tool, uh, sorry, options, input settings, um, controller one. So I want to emulate the Wii U Pro controller. I'll just go X input. Uh, sorry, direct input, wireless controller. Oh no, sorry, sorry, that is for my PS4 controller. Uh, ignore that, so X input, controller one, and then you'll see here if I press this button here. A. Ugh. Sometimes it doesn't play ball, which is annoying. Um, um, when it does that, if you just go options, input settings, and there you go. When it's orange, you know it's going to work. So A, and you'll see that that's set to B because Nintendo layout. B, X, Y. Oh. That's frustrating. Uh, but yeah. And you just kind of go through and you set all of these um, as such. So I'll show you on the screen. ZL. ZR plus minus start and select start select and you'll see that we're just starting to fill it in so we're on the left axis now so click is L3 up down left right right axis R3 up down left right D-pad up down left right easy um, and then just save, oh, I don't have, um, and close that. So now, you can do this part on the GPD if you really want to, just to really hammer home how it works quite nicely. So, I've been playing The Legend of Zelda, uh, options, and then if you go to full screen, it will start playing sound for the GPD XD and then 
So depending on your network, you might end up having a good experience. Um, so on the local network, you'll end up normally with anywhere from about 20 to 25 milliseconds of latency, which is perfectly playable. Um, and there are ways of streaming this over the wider internet, but you would need a strong connection at your home PC as well as the PC you're going from. And you'll see that all it's actually doing is just streaming it from the desktop. So there it is on the desktop, but it just looks absolutely stunning on this smaller display. Um, I do have the graphics packs enabled to give it an oomph in resolution um, and also to apply a more sort of GameCube-esque color palette. But yeah, I just thought, you know what, this works really nicely, it's really smooth, and then I can add my Wii U games to see Emu and just play them like this from home. Um, it's still not entirely portable, but personally I think that the experience is perfectly fine. Um, the other thing that this will do is, I haven't set any of these up, um, so if I go to... Uh, Tekken 7, for example, quick current game and start, yes, establishing connection, you'll see that it's just going ahead and doing lots of stuff on my desktop, puts it into the right resolution, which is 1280 by 720, all of that kind of stuff, uh, makes a noise because it says it's setting up device, uh, I haven't found a way to stop that yet, um, device is ready, cheers windows, I'd never have guessed. But again, it just plays as if like you're just playing it on the GPD itself. Uh, there's also a Steam link out for Steam apps, but that won't do CEMU, and that was the main thing I wanted. And again, these things, they just look fantastic, I think, on this smaller screen at 720p. And... Yeah, it just adds another layer of utility to this device, which I absolutely adore. Um, I, I could ramble on about this device for ages, and maybe I will someday in a longer video. But just, this device is fantastic. I recommend it to anyone, especially JRPG fans. I've enjoyed going through all of the Final Fantasies from 1 through to 9 on this thing. Um, and I'll go through that on a video maybe another time. But, yeah, so, like I said, uh, this was after a conversation with Sky Isle Studio. I'll put a link to his channel below. He got the Dolphin emulator playing quite nicely with the GPD XD+, Plus, um, especially when you apply the clean one, so it's over top. Um, but, yeah, uh, all in all, the community around this device is fantastic as well. Um, there's just a lot of stuff going on, um, lots of new things being found. But, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Cheers.